Hello everybody, my name is Adrian Iliasiu and I'm an engineer with the Cisco DevNet team. In this course, we will go over interacting with the vManage REST API and having a look at the Swagger documentation that comes with the vManage um, server. But before we go there, uh, I'd like to remind you what we've done in the previous lesson. We have went over the vManage uh, graphical user interface. We had a look at all the dashboard, all the components in there. And then we've had a look at where you can find the Cisco SD-WAN vManage REST API documentation. We've seen how it's organized in different sections, how there's a correspondence between the graphical user interface and the API and how it's organized so that it's nice and easy for you to start uh, working with the API. So in this presentation, we'll go over the Swagger documentation. So we'll take it next level, let's say, and we'll um, access the um, documentation at this link right here. So. This link should be familiar to you by now, but we see here it's a slash API docs for the Swagger documentation. Um, and we're going to have a look at a couple of um, try it out calls. So if you're not familiar with Swagger, is a nice self-documenting way of um, building documentation for APIs in a dynamic fashion as you write code the Swagger documentation gets populated and very common in the developer community these days. Uh, also very easy to implement and also very easy to use uh, as a user of the, um, of the platform. So let's go in my browser here. I have it started. I have the URL uh, right there. And you see here the options and the schema of the REST API is organized in different buckets here, which are consistent uh, in a way with the documentation. And I'd like to have a look with you at a couple of options here for the monitoring part. Uh, let's find it, configuration, um, very verbose, and here you can see all the options that are available over the graphical user interface are actually part of the API too. So all the functionality is exposed for you to take advantage of. So under monitoring, let's go and expand this and let's do, let's get a list of devices. So the important information here is we've selected the device details monitoring tab, right? So once I click on it, I get all the API calls that are available under this specific category. So I have here show hide, I can list the operations. And here under the device, I see this case will be a get call. The resource is going to be basically HTTPS uh, slash slash sandbox 8443 will be right here. And then data service slash device. So this will get me a list of the devices that are part of my fabric with one API call. So let's go ahead and do that. Response, I want the response back like we were talking previously in a previous lesson. Application JSON, this means that the uh, response that I'm getting back from the API, I want it to be in JSON format. Um, and then we also have here the status codes, an HTTP status code of 200 means success. So status codes in the 200s uh, usually means everything went fine. 400 status codes for HTTP calls are usually a problem with on the user side with your request. So in this case, a 400 status code would be a bad request. A 403 would be forbidden, you don't have the rights. And then the 500 status codes, it means that there's something wrong with the server. So the problem is not with the client, but it's with the server. Maybe it's overloaded, maybe the process uh, cannot return data, or whatever reason is, and you should have 
an idea of the problem based on the status code. So if it's a 500, you will see a, a status of internal server error. So you get the message and the details and the code in the, um, in the reply. So if you press try it out here, the nice thing with Swagger documentation is that you can actually try it out, try out the calls, the REST API calls right in the interface, right in the web interface. So like we were saying above, important information here, this is the request URL. This is my resource, right? Uh, we've seen data service slash device, and then there's the response body right here. So you'll see it's organized because we specified in the header we want the reply to be application JSON. So the reply has been returned as a JSON key value pairs. And it, it is pretty verbose. Um, there's how the data is organized, what type of data is being returned here. Um, at the beginning of the reply and then if we keep scrolling we get access to the actual data so once we see here the data part this is where our data starts to be returned and the data that we're interested in so we see here we have the device ID in this case the system IP so this is our vManage instance it is reachable the status is normal, uh, the personality, so what's the role of the server, the device type, and we see here it's not part of any groups at this point. Let's update it. So you get all this information very quickly. It took for our call a status code of 200, and then the response headers. So within a split second, we got all this information uh, the version of code that's running here, the site ID, the geographical coordinates, and it's a valid certificate on it. Uh, the status is green, all demons are up. So, and then we get the same information for Vsmart, for our VBOM, for the VEdges. So with one API call in this case to data service device, I got a fairly verbose uh, amount of information back that I can parse and extract data as I see fit. So I wanna check maybe the status, there's a status there. But we also have another resource that we can access to actually get the status of the devices. So if we go up here and we click on the device, it's gonna compact it back up. And then we go device status. So this is another call that we're gonna try out um, same information, the status codes. The endpoint that we go towards now is different. It's still a get call, but will be data service slash device slash status. So that goes one level lower into the schema and the tree of the API and extracts the status of the devices with that call. So if we do a try it out now, we see here again, the resource endpoint is different, and then the response body is, we get what type of data is out there. Um, the status is right here. So for the vSmart, we have a count of one for the status, and there's no errors, there's no warnings, there's zero count, and status normal, there's one. So for our vSmart, we know that everything is normal because count for warnings and errors is zero. So if you want to build an application and monitor for different counts for the error specifically, if it's different than zero, you could have a logic in which you parse the REST API, you get this data back, and you see a count of one, for example, for the error, then you know something is wrong and you can adjust your workflows accordingly with your monitoring solution or ticketing or whatever solution you're, uh, you're using out there for, for your environment. If we scroll back, we see the same thing for the VBON, so a count of one for the status, no errors, no warnings, uh, and normal for uh, a count of one 
for normal. So everything looks good. For the V edges, a count of four. We have no, no errors, no warnings, and four counts of normal for the V edges, for that specific V edge instance. Uh, all right. So another call that I would like to go over, device status, to show you how to explore and look around the API is monitoring interface statistics. So with this call, we'll do this first one, slash statistics, slash interface. So with this call, we will get the statistics on all the interfaces on all the devices throughout our SD-WAN fabric. So if we do it, try it out now, We'll see it takes a bit, a couple of seconds here to come back because there's gonna be a fairly verbose output. The nice thing is that we can specify a query in here. So you can limit the output that the API returns based on your query. So let's say you're trying to limit the amount of time. I want it only for the past two hours, or I want it only for a specific device, or only for a specific interface on a device. So in the query, you can build it and basically limit the output from the API so that it's quicker return to you. Um, still working. Response messages, status codes, also here you see the same status codes. And um, the endpoint in this case will be basically HTTPS colon slash slash this slash data service slash statistics slash interface, right? And once the call finishes, we'll see it uh, down there. Monitoring interface statistics, right? We get one API call with slash statistics slash interface. It's a get call, like I was saying. This is your request URL right here. And then if we have a look at the values right here for this ETA zero interface, we see it here, the device model is a VEdge cloud. And if we scroll down a bit, we'll see that it's VEdge four in this situation. So interface ETA zero on VEdge four has transmitted octets. This value right here, uh, operational status is up and then transmitted packets. Um, we see very importantly that the receive errors and the transmit errors are at zero, which is something that you wanna, of course, have here, no uh, receive or transmit errors on that, on that interface. And like I was saying, if you want to monitor for these specific values, if it's above a certain threshold, you might want to switch traffic to a different interface or shut it down, or it depends on your use case. And we see also uh, received octets. Um, the tenant is the default, and then it's an IPv4 also. It has configured on it, transmit packets, and a lot of verbose data here also, a lot of useful data that you can extract. So in this case, it's better to have more than less so that you can extract from that the information that you're interested in. Um, so we see here it's VH4, like I was saying. The VPN ID you also get for this is 512. So ETA is zero, interface Ethernet zero in VPN 512 on VH4. We go then next to the gigabit uh, zero two interface. We see operational status is down over there. Admin status is down. And this one is also on VH4 in VPN uh, zero. So there's uh, that interface is down. And we also see, of course, statistics. In this case, because it's down, there's no package transmit, no receive on here. But for interfaces that are up, you can see transmit package. So all the statistics, you can monitor them. One API call at this endpoint gets you this data. You parse it, you extract it, you compare thresholds, and you do um, the action that you need to do in your application or your integration or whatever your, your use case is. So we've seen so far the Swagger documentation. We had a look at the API docs. 
and we've done three, we've tried out three API calls. We've seen the devices that are part of the fabric, also nicely organized in JSON format. We got all the data a bit more than what we needed, but like I said, verbosity in this case is in our advantage. Device details, we got a device status for all the devices in our fabric, and then statistics interface. We got statistics for all the interfaces on all the devices in the fabric. And we've mentioned there the query option in which you can specify and limit the output to a specific date or for a specific device or for a specific interface. You can play around with the query and make sure the output that is returned by the API is limited to that specific query. So having said that, quick recap, we've had a look at the Swagger documentation, where it is, and next, we're actually gonna go and play with Postman and show you how to interact with the API from outside, from a third party perspective. All of this has been confined to the vManage server itself, but now we're gonna come from outside and do API calls and interact that way with the, uh, with the fabric and the REST API. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been informative for you and uh, I hope I'll see you on the next video too. Thanks.